uh, first of all, you want to go to settings. I'm not going to change anything because I am recording right now, but I want to show you what you're going to do. So if you're planning on streaming, um, then, you know, service wise, you want to make sure that you use, um, you know, YouTube or custom or restream, whatever you use, that's fine. Uh, normally when I'm streaming directly to YouTube, I'll use YouTube, but I also have restream. So sometimes I'm streaming through restream. So it just depends on which service you want to use. All right. Um, for the output, streaming is very important, but we're talking about recording, right? Because you want to be able to uh, record videos in case you do a tutorial and you want to do a tutorial with Cakewalk because Cakewalk is open for everyone. Like, I don't know everything. You might discover something that I haven't covered or somebody else hasn't covered and you might want to actually do it yourself. So this might be a good opportunity. Um, streaming wise, I keep everything very basic and that's because I've been playing around with this because I have a just a vibe, which is my gaming channel. I've been trying to stream a little bit more. It's a little crazy streaming video games. It requires a lot more like CPU power and especially graphics. So I had to update my graphics card. And so on here, um, this is the setting that I kind of play with to get it the best where it wasn't really glitching. I'm still playing around with this, but I would say start off 2,500 kilobytes per second. Um, the higher you go, the more memory, the more CPU is gonna use, but the better quality it'll be, but sometimes you may get glitchy quality. So make sure you have this set first, all right? And then uh, it's automatically gonna only choose one audio track. Now, if you're recording, you can do multiple audio tracks. Now, I only have three check right now, and I only have all six. Um, and then this is kind of grayed out because I'm recording right now. I can't make any adjustments. But uh, MKV is what I typically have it on, but you can also use MP4, whatever encoder that you have. And if you don't have an encoder or you don't have a built-in additional graphics card or a GPU card, and you're just using the graphics straight out of your computer itself, then you want to stick with the X264, right? But if you do see another option, like I have the AMD and then I also have NVIDIA too as well. So I have two graphics cards in here. One I'm using for one monitor, the other one I'm using for this monitor that I'm on and you go from there. So rescale output, I'm not really worried about any of that. Uh, constant bit rate is CBR and I'm doing it at 4,500 kilobytes per second. Now I could have did a lot higher, the higher you do, the more space is gonna take up, just give you a heads up. All right, so that's one thing to keep in mind too as well. Audio wise, uh, I could have this bit rate. I think it goes up as high as 320, uh, but I have it on 256 right now. And then you can set, you know, which one you want to be what, desktop or microphone. Okay, this is another part that you want to check. Your sample rate, uh, I'm doing 48 kilohertz, which is pretty much standard, 44, 48, 96 if you want to go a little higher, but 48 is pretty much standard. And then you can set your global audio devices. So right now I have my auxiliary audio is set to line zoom, right? But I can set it to my Behringer if my Behringer was plugged up. It's not plugged up right now because I had a wedding um, Saturday. So it's in the case, I'm gonna pr bring it back out. I just wanted the chance to plug up this other one to see how it works. My first time using it. So hopefully it sounds good to you and hopefully everything works out. All right, so here's the line zoom L8 audio. If I wanted to use my Epoch cam, which is my little web camera that's right here. Hi, webcam. All right, I can use the sound from that, which is horrible. Don't use the sound from your webcam, please. It's good if you're just trying to match the audio with the video. Uh, and then the digital audio interface, which is coming from a capture card coming from the Xbox, I believe, and then voice meter, which I haven't used in forever. Um, so that's that. If you have an interface that will allow you to stream well. Now, like I said, if you haven't seen any of my other videos before, you might not know this, but I have a Focusrite Scarlett. I love it, 2i4, it's great, works great. But every time I use this, I can never stream well. It always gave me issues. Um, and so I don't know what, what it was. It might just be this because this is an old unit. I got this from, you know, somebody gave this to me. It was, it was a free, it was like a birthday gift, um, but it was used before that. So if you have issues with it, definitely check the drivers, make sure everything is updated and just trying to play around with it because sometimes like this streaming thing is never perfect but once you have this set up you can go to video too as well base canvas is depending on whatever screen resolution you have so for instance this screen is 1920 by 1080 
So that's where I have it at. The higher screen resolution that you can uh, put it at, the higher output you can put it at. So I can only put it at the max of 1920 by 1080 uh, because that's what I'm seeing. But you know, if you wanna go up a little higher, I'm doing 30 frames per second. If you wanna do 60, that's great. I'm not gonna go into all the details of this because there's a lot of videos about OBS, all right? And successfully advanced. Uh, priority wise, I have it above normal. You wanna create a scene. So I have a million scenes on here. And I just created this scene called Zoom Live Track. All right, you just go to plus sign and then you can enter whatever the name you want it to be, press okay, and it'll put it there. Then the next thing you wanna do is create your sources or add sources. So I have the live track, which is just a direct input. Now I don't have to, I really don't need this. I added it because I was trying to see if I can do separate tracks on here. The power of having a digital mixer is being able to really route things a bunch of different ways. And on this particular unit, I found out, okay, it's got eight inputs. Okay, it can, it's supposed to be able to come in directly which is great. I'm coming out of channel one with my microphone. It's going in, it's getting good signal, which is great, but I can't get one to be by itself without picking out everything else that's coming into as well, because I'm getting the USB signal versus the direct signal, audio signal. All right, so now that I'm here, I can press add or plus sign, and you'll see a bunch of different options here. Okay, one of the things that was mentioned uh, for this particular tutorial that I'm doing now was that how to find the real plugs uh, within OBS. And the reason why I discovered this through Reaper, well, I, I hadn't even really messed with Reaper yet anyway, but I just discovered the plugins. There's a plugin on here called Rea Stream. And this Rea Stream allows you to uh, host a host from audio and MIDI uh, to help you with your streaming support. And it seemed to work really well when I was using my Focusrite because the Focusrite, once again, for some reason I could not stream. I, I, I feel like I was getting a lot of echo or something was going on. And when I um, discovered uh, voice meter, I used voice meter to kind of help fix that problem. But that was before I figured out this. So real stream is another thing that should help. But once again, check to make sure that you need it you might not even need it at all you, once you get to reaper or once you get to these plugins you can definitely try to install the plugins and then apply this real stream which should help you be able to stream better um within obs so this is what i'm gonna do i've checked everything i'm doing the full thing i just want all the plugins anyway i mean it's five megabytes that's what it says so let's press next install it it, it installs into my vst plugins uh, which is under Cakewalk because that's the folder that I created for all the plugins to go. All right, once you've installed the real plugs, then this is how you actually would go about setting it up. Now, it's not going to really work for me now because I already have um, basically an interface that's doing what it's supposed to be doing. But if you have an interface that's having trouble streaming, this is what you should do. First of all, when you create your source, just like I created my live track, uh, you want to go create an audio input. Okay. And once you do the audio input, you should be able to go. And then once you change the properties to it, set it on whatever device you want it to be on, your focus right, Scarlet, you know, whatever channel left, channel right, whichever channel it is. And then you can set it to that. And now what you wanna do is you wanna actually put a filter on here, audio input capture. So I'm gonna click on that. There's filter right here, or you can right click on it and go to filters. Once you're in filters, you're gonna go to plus sign and you're gonna go down to VST 2X plugin. This is what you should see. If you do not see this, then, well, you gotta install the VST plugins. Basically, that's, that's probably what it is. You don't have them installed, but if they're installed, you'll see this and then you'll get a drop down. When you click on it, you can name it whatever you want to, but you'll get this drop down. It's gonna have a whole bunch of plugins on here whatever plugins that you have that will work in here. So I can put the compressor, I can put an ozone Im imager, um, you know, so whatever. And then when you come all the way down to the bottom, you'll see real stream standalone. Now there's always been a bunch of these and I really never knew which one to click on. So it's kind of one of those things where you click on it, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't work, try another one. But normally it just says the real stream standalone. So hopefully that answered your question. Uh, about how to find it and then once you put it on there 
uh, then you should be good to go. And then you should see the signal, okay? It should say receive audio MIDI. And here's the actual signal right here. As you can see, I'm already sending signal from the live track. So I really don't need this plugin or I don't need this filter on there because when I try to add to it now, it's not really gonna do anything at all. Uh, but I am getting a signal going through the restream, so that's good to know. So if you're interested in learning more about this particular mixer, the Live Track L8, stay tuned because I have a video that's gonna focus on doing that and just some of the little fun features that are inside of it. They can help you as a podcaster or help you out as a small home studio guru that needs something that's very simple and lightweight to help you out.